Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Difficult Conversations series. These Difficult Conversations are a series of topics that are not easy to think about, let alone talk about. Yet, they are very important conversations to have for all ages, to help us for future planning and for proactive aging, and to have the ability to make better and more informed choices for our aging future. The first difficult conversation in this series is about funeral planning. And today we have Chuck Lloyd from Unger's Funeral Chapel to talk us through some of those things. Thank you for joining us today, Chuck. Thank you. Thank you for having us again. Yes, it is uh, hard to discuss about your final wishes. Most people will avoid that until the very last moment. At Unger Funeral Chapel, we do provide pre-planning uh, in advance, which we write down your requests and have, have a copy in our file. We go over the different options with you, whether it be cremation or burial. We review the cost for those services and merchandise. And if you wish, you can prepay for these services in advance. And that provides the merchandise and the services in the advance in the future at no additional cost. Monthly payments can be arranged or a one lump sum payment is available. If at this time you did not wish to prepay but like to have your wishes written down, we still go ahead and have all this information uh, recorded for you. As far as some other questions that are quite often asked is about veterans. Veterans and their spouses, there are some benefits available such as military honors for the veteran, a placement for the veteran and spouse at the National Cemetery. Uh, Willamette National in Portland is uh, our closest national cemetery, but you can be placed at any national cemetery. And there's no cost to the veteran and spouse for those cemetery fees. If the veteran was receiving any monthly benefits from the Veterans Administration, there could be monetary uh, benefits, and we assist you uh, with the forms to apply for that. People ask about Social Security, and yes, we are required to notify Social Security at the time. However, the family must go ahead and contact Social Security. We have their telephone number, their email, website, but you do need to contact them to talk about survivor's benefits for the spouse and if there's any minor children. We even assist families to secure a plan qualifying for Medicaid and ensure that their uh, needs are met. If you'd like to call and just ask questions more on a personal nature, we're available to do that. Phone number is a 503-873-5141. You also have our website, and we do uh, list our general price list on there so you'll know what the costs are uh, if you just want to review that. Is there any questions out there at this moment? Yeah, I just wanted to know, like, the, maybe the top five things you would recommend to do with you ahead of time so that actually some of the burden is taken off of your families. I would say a person in the late 30s to 40s should automatically start planning, uh, making their wishes known to their uh, significant others. As we all know, we have no idea when the uh, death may occur and if we never talk about it, then this leaves the family up uh, more emotionally um, what to do. So I would say the family should at least start talking to each other in their 30s come in, uh, visit with, I guess, the answers that you may have when they're young people. People who are in their 40s who have uh, parents or grandparents that they're being, needing to take care of, you need to talk to them, uh, get their ideas, their wishes written down, have them come and make arrangements. You'd be amazed that if you do this, you get a peace of mind that knowing that things are going to be taken care of your uh, of your wishes and people are aware of it. We also have a lot of families out there that have second and third marriages. And that's a concern of what do we do now? And so by families talking to one another, by having these uh, wishes written down, it gives more of a precise uh, meaning and what to do. 
Five things on file that you should really have uh, available for other members of the family and for the funeral home would be if the person is a veteran to have the military discharge papers available. Um, if you, they cannot locate one or uh, they could contact us. We have a website that you can go to and request a, a copy of the death excuse me, the discharge papers. The other item that's important is if you have the social security number, as you know, the, we're still using our numbers, but new social security cards are coming out with letters and whatnot. But for the legal purposes at this point with the certificates, uh, we're using, still using numbers. I think if you have a pre-planning guide that we have available and you can list down um, for the family, uh, life insurance policies, retirement accounts, things to that nature. In some cases, when a younger person has passed away, uh, the surviving spouse would need to have a copy of their marriage license. And if there's minor children, to make sure you have birth certificates for them. And that's for the purposes of any social security benefits that could come up. One other information that a lot of people kind of forget over the years is um, vital statistics, that's uh, information that's required for the certificate. And that would be like their father's name and their mother's maiden name. That uh, seems to be a, over the years, people kind of forget what the mother's maiden name was. So that information is very important to have available. Do death certificates have to come to you certified in an envelope or can the family member just bring in the death certificate or? We, uh, we initiate the certificate and then um, send to the doctor, either electronically or in person. Mm -hmm. And then when we re receive it back, then we file it with the county and then we're able to get the certified copies. And then we contact the family that they may re be mailed to or receive. Mm -hmm. The original uh, certificate is always on file with the state of Oregon so what you would be receiving is just certified copies of the right. certificate. I can't remember if it was my mom's funeral or, uh, I just really remember saying that we needed like five different copies of the death certificate. You need certificates um, for any life insurance policies, property transfers, um, bank accounts, vehicles, um, retirement accounts, uh, stocks and bonds. Uh, so so each, per, each family has a little bit different uh, needs. Uh, some can get by as few as three, others may mean 10 or 12. So, so can, can I make those copies myself? The funeral home's not allowed to make copies of the certified. Some businesses will, after they see the certified copy, may make a copy for themselves and give it back to you. But as far as uh, you personally doing that, you can, but you need to really check with a particular business that you're referring to. So with COVID and everything going on right now, how are people handling memorial services? What is your protocol now? I would assume nobody gets to come in and see the body, but the person. In, in the very beginning, it was very difficult for the families. Uh, now that we've been a little bit more relaxed as far as, I shouldn't say relaxed because that's a, right. a good word, but right. um, now we're able to have memorial services. Uh, a lot of the churches now do live streaming and they allow only a immediate family or a few other members to be there at the actual service. The same way at the funeral home, we can live stream and have, have uh, a few people in, whether it be at the church or graveside service or in our chapel, mm -hmm. masks are still required to use, social distancing uh, to, to a point that uh, the best we can do that. Say the family wanted to come in for a viewing of the um, person, we can arrange that. We just make sure that uh, a limited number of people come in doing the space, uh, social distancing, and uh, wearing masks. How many people is that? Maybe 10 or 12? In the beginning, there was only 10. And each church is a little bit different. Um, so I, I hesitate to put a number down right. for sure because of that. Some cemeteries will allow 50 people uh, for a graveside service. Outdoors people 
or protocol seems to feel you can do a little more or have a bigger group because they can socially distance more outside. They can, but, uh, but they should, still should be considering the mask no matter yeah. where. And uh, did you mention how long you've been in business here in town? Myself, I've been 49 years uh, in the profession. The funeral home has been there, well, the one in Mount Angel has been there 100 years now. Yeah. And I think it was 1929 for Silverton. I could be off just a little bit on that. Uh, Paul Rupp, that is the manager there, he's, he's been there 40 years, so people really recognize him. And then we do have a, a couple other staff members part-time. So let me walk through some of this. So um, when my mom passed away, we came to you to have her there for that interim time or before her cremation. And at that time, uh, you meet with the family and we had a lot of things to discuss that were interesting from um, memorial memorable things like maybe uh what to put the ashes in or um even making the programs and the funeral announcements you handle all of that uh printing and publication and getting all of that ready is that difficult sometimes working with the family maybe family members don't all agree always on what needs to be in your paperwork or your what is the word you use it's not a funeral announcement funeral acknowledgement. Part of that, what you were referring to is what you said service announcement. and that would be the uh, uh, service folders or memorial folders that we have printed up to hand out at the time of the, of the service. Mm -hmm. uh, for, we also do prayer cards for the Catholic mm -hmm. uh, community, uh, what I'd call a memorial book for people to sign. Oh. And so there's a lot of decisions of what type of uh, service memorial folder you want. You could have the photo of the deceased on there or different scenes, nature scene, or just whatever you come up with or want to do, we can do that for it. So we talk about that um, and the urn for the uh, cremains of the person being cremated. Uh, there are several types that's available there. For casket burials, you have to worry about the selection of a casket. There's so many little things. If you don't have a cemetery, then you have to decide uh, which cemetery you'd like to be at. Then you have to think about uh, a memorial marker, headstone. We try to go through everything, but then don't overwhelm you uh, with that. Uh, for an example, the memorial uh, headstone can be worked on at a later time. We also assist in doing uh, placing the obituary and the necessary papers. Right. So usually a family member is uh, involved in writing that uh, and, and get it to us so we can put it in the format for the newspapers, whether it be local or out of town, out of state. There's so many little things. Um, and by doing some of this in advance, it really takes care of those little uh, questions that people have. Because some of those might be things you don't normally think about that would fall through the cracks when you're dealing with a you know, um, unsettling situation. Maybe it's a crisis. Maybe it's, you know, it's definitely sad and people are grieving. So it is hard to think of everything all at the same time. And even though you write down today what we what you want, uh, the type of service folders, for an example, uh, you know, later on that can always be changed. Another question some people have is, what if I, after living here 50 years, am moving to another state oh. to be closer to my family. What happens if I have prepaid for the services here? The answer is the funds that you give us in advance, where we are required by law to place them into a third party trust. Okay. Which we refer to most generally as an insurance policy. Sure. That insurance policy then would be transferred to the other funeral home. Their fees may be different than our fees, but at least those funds are available. Well, that's nice to know because I do see that happening with folks later in life. Sometimes they do end up moving to be closer to family and that sort of thing. And, and maybe they have already started planning things. Correct. Um, I, I really uh, am impressed with your pre-planning uh, uh, of people coming in. Uh, we didn't realize my mother had started doing that actually oh. uh, so until she passed. And then we found that she'd actually had come in and on her own and talk to you guys and 
had set up some of her own details. And I, I that was really nice. Um, it'd been nice to know that, but it was nice to know it when it happened, you know. So you deal with all types of religions, non-religions, the whole gamut. Correct, yes. Can I ask maybe what was the most uh, interesting uh, funeral you've done or, or bizarre? Is that something I can ask? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's hard for me to really say. Uh, all of them are memorable in one way or the other to me. Let me uh, just side sub that subject just a second and tell you that we also offer what they refer to as green burials. Uh, that's uh, something that's come up that people have been more environmentally uh, inclined and they do not wish to have uh, a, a casket that's not so degradable, perhaps. I, I actually had seen a biodegradable casket. One mm -hmm. of the ladies, one of our volunteers, mother had passed away in the area, but wanted to be buried in like Eugene, I believe, or someplace down south. So they actually got a, and I believe it's some kind of press board or cardboard uh, type of uh, casket that they could paint and decorate and do however they wanted. But it was interesting to know that there are biodegradable caskets available. Correct. There, we have, uh, well, they do like what you spoke, more like the fiber board. They have uh, um, wood caskets which is all wood construction, no metal uh, hinges or anything of that nature on it. We have wicker caskets, which is a bamboo type style. Oh, wow. Yeah. We have those available for people to discuss and talk about. On the cremation side, there is aqua cremation uh, in lieu of the traditional fire cremation. And aqua cremation is the water chemical that uh, the deceased is placed in a chamber and then uh, cremation activity takes place. Could you talk a little bit more about the history of Ungers? Maybe you could give us a little more history on how you became involved. I've been with Ungers for uh, a little over two and a half years now. I work part time. Uh, prior to that, I had worked uh, in Salem at a funeral home for 16, 17 years. And then, for lack of another word, I retired that I find that I enjoy this working with families. And um, so I kind of missed it. So I came, Ungers asked me if I'd like to work a little part-time. And so I came aboard to do that. Ungers, as I said, has been here forever and a day, providing all the services, uh, whether it be the cremation burial or uh, transfer to out of state. If families find that there is another uh, funeral home out of the area that may be a little bit less. We don't match their prices. We want to serve our community of, of Silverton since we've been here forever and we feel like we're part of the Silverton community and so we would like to be always involved with our community. Can I ask you another question? Yes. But I was just wondering what are the laws regarding spreading remains? So if people want to take their um, Okay. loved ones and take them to their favorite spots or out in the ocean? Here in the state of Oregon, there is no laws against, I'll use the word, scattering of cremains in a special area. If you went to a, uh, to a state park or something, federal park, you'd want to just check in with the local authority about that. Uh, but there's no law against it. You can bury a person on your own property. Uh, with the necessary permits from the county uh, or somebody else's property as long as you have permission and the, the permits from the county. If you're going to an area where it's kind of populated, you want to be discreet in doing that, of course. Uh, but uh, a lot of people want to go to their favorite fishing, fishing spot or their hunting spot or whatever uh, they may have. Uh, in mind, and, and in, again, in Oregon, uh, there's no laws against it. Other states have very strict laws about what and how you can um, scatter. So, if you were to die here and want to be taken to another state, mm -hmm. you need to check with that state for sure what their requirements are. We actually just uh, found that out 
when um, one of our members recently passed away. Uh, he didn't have a lot of money and we worked out a, a situation with Ungers. What we found out is, yes, we can spread his uh, ashes in our memorial garden, but no, we cannot bury the ashes in the memorial garden. We have a memorial garden that was started several years ago and we need to make it uh, more memorable for people. You know, we need to be using it more. When we've had a few folks pass away over the years and we've put a couple things in there, but you know, um, with this one uh, member passing away, we want to do more with it. Now is a really good time for us to put some more effort to reestablish it and make it a true memorial garden. Um, several years ago, I had a, um, a really good friend of ours when we were younger pass away and she never got to travel. And so what all of, there's about five, three to five girlfriends of hers all took some of the ashes. And every time they went somewhere different or special, they would leave some of her ashes there as a memory or a tribute to her not getting to travel, but now she is sort of thing. And I always thought that was really nice. It sounds like you guys are really accommodating and flexible and willing to work with people, work with families and individuals to meet their funeral planning needs. We know that uh, there are times there are families out there that do have a real financial burden and Ungers will work with uh, the families when it comes to uh, uh, financial difficulties. That's uh, something that I marvel about the Hunger Funeral Chapel. We never refuse anyone uh, but because of, of lack of money. I've uh, seen that both professionally and personally, and it truly is touching uh, and heartwarming to know that that's, that happens at such a time of uh, need. Truly, you guys provide a valuable service for this community as a senior center director and a member of the community. Thank you for all you do. Well, thank you very much. Personally and professionally appreciate it. It's been great hearing you talk about the different options and what is available. You know, I don't think we can talk about this enough or soon enough, mm -hmm. even though it's a difficult conversation to have. And if people have other questions that might not be answered today, you guys are always available to chat with people. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for uh, having us. Folks who are watching this at a later date, feel free to contact us or Ungers. You need some more uh, information or direction. And thank you for joining us today for our first in our series of difficult conversations. This will be going on every Tuesday in September at 2 p.m. Thank you, guys. Have a great afternoon.